Hi, everybody. Welcome to Busy Living Life. Busy Living So Far. Hi, everybody. It is episode 306. Elizabeth Chance here. It's episode 306. Can you believe it? 306 episodes. And here we are. And today's topic is going to be... Um, today's topic is going to be... Don't give up. And today we are sponsored by Soberlink. Each and every person in the fight of addiction, alcohol addiction has their own reason for recovery. Maybe it's a husband, wife, daughter, son, mom, dad, best friend, colleague, job, hobby, or just yourself. Whatever your reason for recovery, we are all in this together on Busy Living Sober. My mission includes changing the stigma that's associated with addiction. And that's why I par partnered with Soberlink because they believe in the same thing that I do. Soberlink is a remote alcohol monitoring technology created to help provide accountability for people in recovery. The system includes a high-tech breathalyzer device with facial recognition that allows you to share your sobriety in real time with loved ones who can offer support in the event of a slip or a relapse. God, what a great tool. Soberlink has helped hundreds of thousands of people document proof of sobriety in real time to rebuild trust and foster peace of mind. Soberlink is currently building a strong community of people in recovery. Get inspired to inspire others today by joining the community at www.soberlink.com slash BLS for busy living sober. Go check out Soberlink, especially if you're having a hard time. And you have somebody that keeps getting on your back and you're like, I'm sober. I promise you I haven't been drinking. And they're like, no, I don't believe you. We'll get that sober link tool and it will help you let everybody know that you are telling the truth. Because I know a lot of people sometimes don't believe us, when, especially when we're first getting sober. And talking about giving up, giving up, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. How many times have you felt like that in your life? Especially, especially when we are, um, it's when we're in something that gets, it, that's uncomfortable. When it gets uncomfortable, we're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to keep doing this anymore. It's too hard. I don't want to do it. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. And I don't want to endure anymore. I want to just give it up and I want to throw the towel in. And um, I think it's especially true when we are getting sober because I've watched a lot of people that have had some time or they're in the just the beginning and they mess up and they say, oh my gosh, I drank, I drank, it's done. I'm done with this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. I can't do it. I'm a loser. I'm a failure. I can't stay sober. Or you have the feeling, let's even say you're on a diet and you've been doing like the counting calories and then you go out and you have a massive dinner of pasta and caramazoo and whatever desserts and you're like oh my gosh I just went and I ate all this stuff I said I wasn't going to and we say oh it's all bucks are off and I can tell you right now as you guys know if you're if you follow me a lot or at least even if you follow me in the past two weeks or a couple of weeks you know that I'm at a yoga training program teacher training program in Cocoa Beach Florida and it has been difficult it has been uncomfortable. Many things have been uncomfortable. It hasn't met my expectations. But what I realized this morning, just this morning, literally just like about an hour ago, and by the way, it's Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. I realized this morning when I was writing my gratitude, I get, I get really quiet in the morning. At least I, I, I didn't do that the first week I was here, which was, I think, a huge thing. I also didn't go to a meeting for an entire week. Those two things like made everything even worse. But um, I sat down and I started to write and I realized that all of these things that I've endured that have been uncomfortable, the uncomfortableness of getting to a place where I was not comfortable sleeping, getting to a place where I was, um, I couldn't participate and people were a lot older than I am, right? So that was uncomfortable. And so getting and realizing those things were uncomfortable. My thought on two days, ago, three days ago was I'm done. I'm quitting this. I'm going home. I'm driving home. I sent a text message to my entire family because 
you know, some of them have doubts if I'm going to finish this. And some of my friends, I'm sure I've been like, oh my gosh, you can do this. Cause it's not, it's hard. I don't always do things that are hard. I, sometimes when things get hard, I'm like, I'm out. I don't want to do this. But um, I met two really amazing women on this trip that have like totally loved me to the point that I'm like, all right, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. And I went to a meeting and I talked to them and it has been actually not as bad as I, like I made a piece of, I, in my head, right? In my head, I'm like, I can't do that move. I can't do that move. I'm not that flexible anymore. I'm 53 years old. I'm actually closer to 54 than I am to 53. Um, I'm not, I have, you know, psoriatic, I have psoriatic arthritis. I have all these excuses in my head why I couldn't do this. And I'm comparing, but it's really my insides. It's not my outsides. It's that I look over at them and I say, they can do this. I can't do it. They can do this. I can't do that. Because we don't love ourselves. We don't have any confidence in ourselves, right? We, um, we lack that, so many of us. And we compare, 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 and we judge, 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 and we have no idea. And I have to tell you all, I, and I've been doing that. I've been doing the, the, what I need to do. I did a meditation. I presented a meditation. I have to present a sequence to all these people. And um, I saw other people's sequences and I realized I'm not that bad, but why is my first thing? My first thought is I suck. It's I suck. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. And especially if you've just quit drinking or you've wanted to quit drinking and you're like, I want to quit. I don't like this relationship. And I, and I messed up again and I don't want to do it anymore. And you're like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, I just screwed up. Forget it. I'm done. But don't give up. Endure when it's hard. Don't just give up. It's, um, I have to tell you, you know, like a little bit less than, I'm a little bit more than two weeks out of being 16 years continuously sober. Somebody asked me if I was really, are you sober? Are you California sober? I had no idea what California sober was, by the way. I guess that's when you smoke weed. It's no, I'm sober as a church mouse. Uh, yeah, I haven't had anything in so long and um, I haven't had anything in 16 years, but I still have this thinking and I still have this you know, if I don't go into a room with other alcoholics and for me, I, I, you know, I love AA. It's like, anytime I walk into an AA meeting, I don't care where it is in the world, wherever I walk into one, I literally feel like I'm at home. I feel like, oh, these are my people. These are my people. And I saw somebody at the meeting I went to here and she, she isn't done digging. And you might say, what does that mean? She isn't done digging. Well, she's had some things happen in her life. And a lot of people that are drink that drink to the point of access have problems, but what, but to measure a problem and when you need to stop is where like a lot of us get a little confused. We're like, well, wait a minute. I haven't lost my house. I haven't lost my husband. I haven't lost my car. I haven't lost my job. I still get getting paid these jobs that pay me a lot of money. So I don't have a problem anymore. That must not be me. I must not have an alcohol problem. But I think that if you in your head believe that you have a problem, that's enough for you to quit. And I think we put so much emphasis on others and what others think that we don't take care of ourselves. How do we do that? What is it that's going to work for you? For me, as I mentioned, is AA. What would you try a meeting? I don't know. Try a meeting, especially on Zoom. It's so easy. I've mentioned this many times. I, I do host a meeting. I haven't been there a lot recently because again, I've been on the road, but it's at, um, you can find it on busylivingsober.com under morning hope. That's the little tagline to know that that's where an, a Zoom A meeting is every day at 8 a.m. And people are there every day. There might only be a couple of people, but go check it out. Um, really taking the time to see what that, if that would work for you. But how to endure this is to talk to others, to pray, to meditate, to realize that you can do anything that you set your mind to. And it might be uncomfortable for a moment. And it might be uncomfortable for a couple of days. It could be uncomfortable for a couple of months, but it too shall pass. It will pass by. And then you will feel like, oh my gosh, I made it through this. I went past this. I 
I went over that barrier that keeps getting in my way of uncomfortableness. I don't know whoever told us that we're supposed to be comfortable all the time. I don't know where that came from because I don't think that cavemen were, were comfortable. Can you imagine sleeping on rocks? I think there's people that don't have anything and, and it's not comfortable. And how do you get out of it? It's tenacity, it's drive, it's loving yourself more than anything else. It's going what other people think is not my worry. And it's having something that you can pray to. You know, um, I call my higher power God because I believe in God, but it's so much more universal than when I thought it was when I was first getting sober. You know, I was raised Catholic, my dad's Jewish. It's like, what is God? I raised my kids Episcopalian. And um, it's this big over, you know, something that's bigger than us, something that's got more power than us, something that we can give hope to. Maybe it's the moon, maybe it's the sun, maybe it's a relative that's passed away, maybe it's a cardinal, maybe it's the trees in your backyard, maybe it's the beach, maybe it's just a little water fountain in your house or in your backyard, whatever it is, finding that that can get you through it. Because I can tell you when I was going through this time where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I um, called my youngest son, Henry. And I said, Henry, I think I'm just done. I just, I can't do this anymore. It's just, this thing is too hard. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just going to drive home tomorrow morning. Now, because I told him, because I told him that I, what I was feeling, I got vulnerable with my child, which you normally think it's supposed to be reversed, but I got vulnerable with my son. And I said, this is what I'm feeling. And my son's response was, mom, do you remember when you made me try out for the swim to be a lifeguard? I had not be a lifeguard. He took the lifeguard training certification. And one of the things you have to do to pass, I think probably people know this, that you have to tread water, right? For a certain amount of time. And Henry has a muscle disease. So his, mus his muscle mass in his body is so heavy that he sinks easier, right? He doesn't have a lot of fat on his body. So he goes straight to the bottom. So for him to tread water was really, really hard. And he's like, I don't want to do it because I have my muscle disease. And I'm like, no, you're doing it. You're doing this. You have to get this done. You want to take this to the next level. You want to be a camp counselor. You have to be able to be a lifeguard. You have to be able to know how to save lives. So you have to tread water. It doesn't matter that you have this muscle disease. You have to do it. So he went and he tried and tried and tried. And he did it. He hated every minute of it. Obviously, I scarred him about it because he just brought it up the other day. But he reminded me that not everything is easy all the time. And how do we endure when we are feeling so uncomfortable? Tell somebody, don't be alone. You can always tell me, you can always reach out to me. I always respond and Elizabeth at elizabethchance.com or you can reach me at busy, B-I-Z-Z-Y at busylivingsober.com. But just know that you're not alone. And if you let the feeling out of your head and put it through your lips to somebody else, this is what I'm feeling. Is this a rational thought? Is this an unrational thought? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? If you don't agree with me, why don't you agree with me? And if you do agree with me, why do you agree with me? And help convince me to go and make it over the finish line. Just do it. As much as it hurts and as much as I swear, I literally was in my yoga class one day and I was like, all I want to do is stop my feet. I want what I want. I want what I want. Stop my feet like a two-year-old little girl. I want to do that because I'm not getting what I want and I don't feel. Okay, so it feels uncomfortable and I'm just going to quit. Like a little baby. That's what I do. Can you relate to that? You're like, oh, I was on this diet and I lost weight and I went out and I ate a piece of cake. And now it's over. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Start over today. You were, you've got a problem with alcohol. You're like, I can't do this. I can't do life without alcohol or drugs. Well, for one, if you're taking a lot of alcohol or doing a lot of drugs, you need to speak to your doctor prior to doing anything. Okay. Call your doctor, tell them the truth. Maybe even go to telehealth if you have to, or go to a minute clinic where they don't know you. Just some medical professional that will tell you that you are okay to detox on your own. Because I will tell you, and I've mentioned this many times, you can die from detoxing if you are reliant on alcohol. 
You need to talk to somebody about it. Do not do it by yourself. Do not do it by yourself. It's, you, it could kill you. So talk to a doctor. Again, you can talk to a doctor on Zoom so you don't have to feel so vulnerable. It's the nicest part about COVID, by the way. That's the only thing I like about COVID is that we can all do this tele thing. But making sure if you did or you want to quit and you got through one day and you didn't get through the other or you didn't get through the next four, but you still want to quit, try it. It's going to be uncomfortable. I promise you it's going to be uncomfortable for a little bit. It's going to feel like eh, eh, eh. the skin is like crawling and you want to you just want because you hate your thoughts and everything else. Reach out, tell somebody. Again, you can always write to me. I will respond. You are not alone. And just know that you can do this. You can do this. Come on. Now I have to go because I made this really quick today because I have to go learn how to do yoga on a paddleboard. I can barely do yoga on a flat surface on the earth, but now I have to go do it on water. This should be interesting. Now I'm not going to give up. I'm going to try to do it, even though it's going to be hard and it's probably going to be uncomfortable and I'm probably going to get wet. So off I go. I thank you so much for following me. Please subscribe if you like my channel. Please share it with your friends. Just for this one thing though, no, you're not alone. You can do this just one day at a time. Just one day, sometimes one minute at a time. And then that's an hour. Then it's a day. Then the days add up to weeks and weeks add up to years. You never know. But do this for you. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And it's okay to be uncomfortable. I can promise you because I have been really uncomfortable this past week and a half. So until next week, keep getting busy, living sober. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.